Hello and welcome to how I play my level 85 bard. So we're going to get into this. <laughs> Sorry about the intro. I totally forgot what I was going to make a video on. Uh, but uh, we're going to go over the bard's songs and we're going to talk about uh, how I've changed up the multi-bind down here and a few other things we'll talk about. Uh, so I'm currently illusioned as a halfling because halfling bards should be a thing. But uh, let's get into this. So, spoiler, this is not the same character I had before. Obviously, it's the same name. Uh, I didn't want to redo the epic uh, 1.0 quest for the Bard, Shaman, or Shadow Knight, so I just cannibalized some other characters and uh, renamed them once we hit 85 uh, to do that. So, I do have some rank 2 spells, but uh, that's just because I had them before. So, that's why there. But it doesn't matter, rank 1 and 2 are fairly close when it comes to statistics so first up i have aria of the poet this is a uh over haste uh increased damage spell for casters so it's really nice uh it's uh decays on spells over 25 so as we level uh to 86 we should get an update to this which will give us the same stats going forward so it's you know you don't really Lose out, I believe it's like literally the first spell I'm going to remember. Yeah, right here, so 86. <laughs> uh, Katara of Ra Ra Rodkit. Uh, so this is our current level regen spell. A War March of the Brecht. Uh, this is our current level haste. You'll notice I, I say current level, right? Because like, that means all I've done is updated to that version, right? Uh, that's, and that's kind of how like a lot of these classes work, is you just take the next level uh in certain cases sometimes you don't but uh most of the time you do this is uh, just gives us a damage shield attack strength and 60 percent haste well, it's nice to have and then i have four chance uh, they all do the same amount of damage which is uh it says 686 right it's like oh, you're looking at it at face value that's terrible damage right absolutely terrible you would not use these uh, but you'll see here in a moment that it is not that much damage. In fact, I'll just show a preview. This is how much damage I'm currently doing with my chance. About 3,600 for flame. They're all about 3,600. Now, some of them get focused up to 4,100. And then we get crits for 8,600. Uh, let's see here. 9,600 or 9,077. And so on and so on. So the damage is a real thing so keep that in mind so i have all four chance there's only four uh then we have arcane arietta which is uh a spell that adds procs right so there's four charges on it and it adds i think about 1500 to 2000 damage to every spell that's cast let's uh let's go over here i believe the bar uh, this mage here has it so we're gonna do uh fickle fire blaze so, okay, well, he got a crit. So the crit of that spell did 8,200, which was more damage than the spell, uh, which was to win cast. Jeez. All right, let's try it again. Uh, two, yeah, two, about 2,000. So 2,086 from the Arcane Arietta effect. So you can see there, and then it was twin cast, so it did it twice. So both the, the twin cast did it twice. So you, you can just infer the amount of damage that this is going to be putting out for the, the mages and uh, the beast lord in my group. Then I, uh, I have Wave of Slumber. So I got rid of single target mez because I haven't used it the entire time we played. Uh, and I put in Wave of Slumber, which is at 85. It's the first time we get it, is the point blank AOE mez which will mez six creatures. Now, I have not used it yet. Uh, I have used it in previous series, and I kind of have a little button here for it. Tack off, you know, whatever, cast nine. I think it's right, yeah, cast nine. So this will AOE mez uh, pretty much anything within the level range, right? If I cast it here, I think it should just be this one because these are higher level. Yeah, those ones are higher level. It lands on this one. So it's a pretty big range. Uh, obviously, pretty much everything in this part of the screen. 
So it's nice. Now, why do I have it there? And how, like, so if you watch the Hobbs and Friends series, you'll see that I do not, I don't do anything that's, uh, that's, that's not crazy. Like, I, I pull all the mobs, like, when I'm leveling, I'm just pulling, like, three or four reds at a time, and I just kill them. Like, the Shadow Knight and the, the, you know, the group that I've built just kills things so fast that I'm not really needing to mess. I, you know, there's times where I could have messed and stuff like that. Now, this is for emergencies. Now, if I have more than six mobs, this would be a time that I might hit it. Because it would at least mess six of the mobs that are there. Uh, but what I do is I just AoE taunt everything onto the Shadow Knight and kill it. So it, it's it's very situational and I don't see myself using it very often. But I'm never going to use single target mez, so I might as well do this, right? Uh, I also have Silence of the Void, which is our current level. Whoa, we're going to get a new one at 86. It'll do higher level mobs, but I, I've been fighting mobs that are like 88. At I started fighting them at level 80. They were like 88, 86, 87 mobs, so I could have never used this anyway. <laughs> so, uh, the whole time I was leveling. So it, it's there just in case at some point I need it to do some kind of pull, but for the most part, it's just, it hasn't been a thing. And then a new spell we got at level 85, uh, Vin Imur's Insult is uh, the first line of insult spells, which uh, it does, what, 1700 damage uh, on just a direct damage. Now it takes mana, right? We'll see how much mana here it takes. 3% of my mana to cast that. It did 8200 damage. Now, why would I want to cast this at all, right? So... As I've said in other setup videos and other uh, how I play my videos, I'm I'm building these characters so that they're ready for when they get to 125. So they they're already doing the things that they need to do and they know how to do it, right? Uh, Troubadour's synergy we get at 105 is our first synergy. Now I can keep leveling this character the way I have it set up now, just changing out the spells and it's ready for 105. One. 10, 120, 125, if all I do is change out the spells. Because this is insult is our synergy spell. And this allows everybody within uh, a 200 foot radius to increase one damage of melee or direct damage attack by 36,000 points. So it's 80 PS by casting that, right? So everybody gets it. I cast it in the, uh, in the melody. I'll show the melody here in a minute. But uh, it does take mana. Now, this at this point, the bard is going to start consuming mana and uh, stuff like that. So it's very... Uh, what's the word? You need to kind of pay attention to it. Because <laughs> uh, your bard will run out of mana, run out of stamina, if you don't. But uh, from what I can tell, I think the only thing I am have right now is the insult that's using it. Plus Crescendo. Crescendo uses 500 mana. But that's that's not as bad. All right, so that's the current spells that I use like most of the time. Uh, another spell I use is Aria of the Poet, or Aura of the Poet, I guess is uh, the better way to say. Because Aria is the norm normal spell, um, but uh, you see here the Aura is a kind of a always active spell. And my melody is kind of long, so there is a t chance where Aria of the Poet will drop off because it is only uh, 26 seconds duration, whereas Aria the Poet, as long as everybody's within range of the Bard, they will be able to get access to that. And it gives them a little bit of uh, minor overhaste and minor spell damage. So that's just like something that's always there. I could probably take this out of my rotation, but I'm leaving it there because it, I believe it is better. Uh, I'd have to look up the spell numbers and stuff like that, but I believe that is better than the uh, aura. But I kind of just keep it there just to have it as an option, right? Um, but that's the that's it. <laughs> that's the only spells we get as a as a as a bard right right now. Now there's some other stuff in my multi bind here we'll talk about. Uh, I don't believe we got any new disciplines. No, we haven't gotten any new disciplines since level 69. 
that could just be that I didn't buy them. I didn't see them. Uh, but I didn't see any when I bought my level 86 plus spells and, and plain of knowledge either. So they're just, there's not a lot of stuff to do there. Uh, but let's go into the hot bars here. So everything's the same. <laughs> like it's the same. I got rid of the single target mezes. I put in an AOE mez one there. Uh, but it's there. Now the melody is what has changed because that is pretty much how you how you play a bard now and live, right? You can obviously still do the twisting and nonsense you want to do, but like there's just no point. It is overly tedious and I just I don't have the time for that. Even playing a single character. Now, the way I've changed this up is I put an insult every rotation. <laughs> uh, well, actually, every every two rotations. So it's it's insult, rotation, rotation, insult, rotation, and then crescendo. All right, that's kind of the way it goes. Now, a rotation for me is so after the insult, aria, and then we go into chant, and then katata chant more march chant um arcane arietta chant and then that's that gets us to seven and then back to one so back to aria of the poet and that's a whole rotation right so it's insult rotation rotation insult rotation crescendo now crescendo has a like I don't know I haven't timed this all out but it's a 30 seconds so it seems to be about right I don't need this going constantly it's just it's a burst of mana that comes back to the group at the end of that crescendo so I don't need it being refreshed every cycle but being refreshed every what three rotations that that's probably enough like um, at 125 I've mapped it all out so I have a, a different rotation for then it kind of fixes a lot of this, but uh, for, for now, it works really well for me. So that's just the way I have it. So that's a 11, 1, 4, 2, 5, 3, 6, 8, 7, 1, 4, 2, 5, 3, 6, 8, 7, 11, 1, 4, 2, 5, 3, 6, 8, 7, 12. If you're copying this at home, uh, I probably said it too fast though. But uh, that's that for the for the uh, melody, right? Now, I guess we could talk about this real quick. Now, you'll see that I'm I have in my offhand rattle of the easily amused, which is a percussion instrument, and it's not a weapon. Uh, I do have other weapons. I have some paragon weapons I could use, but I'm using this because it's adding about a hundred to two hundred extra damage to each chant. And as I'm leveling, mobs are dying really fast. And for me to go from, you know, like switching from my my Shadow Knight to my Bard to move her into position, right? I'm losing time that I could just be doing other things. So I'm trying to try out if I can just turn on my melody and just look pretty. <laughs> like that's, that's what I'm trying to do. Oh, geez, I hit herself. That's going to kill her probably. There we go. All right, there we go. Insult. So if I just have her going and doing her thing with that extra thing, so she's losing, she's losing the melee damage from offhand, right? Now this weapon gives you thirty percent extra melee damage with a single weapon, so your melee attacks are a little stronger. But the theory I have with this is that I can let her just sing, and I don't have to worry about positioning her, and I just play the Shadow Knight. And then let them do their multi binds, right? So that's the kind of the the premise of what I'm doing here. Um, how much damage it actually does? I mean, look at this damage. This is insane amounts of damage. Now this is bonused uh, by the focus right here, improved chance. So we get 20% extra damage from our chance, and this just goes all the way up to like 500% as you get to 125. So you can imagine the amount of damage that's coming out of these chants towards the end of this, right? And uh, there is, I think, uh, there's something that makes them last an extra tick because these are at lasting like uh, like almost 20 seconds, right? So it's it works pretty well. Now, typically when I fight a mob, I'm getting like two or three ticks off, but I'm also losing like time because I'm moving characters around uh, to do you know more stuff. So. 
my goal is to just have the bard stand there and look pretty while casting these chants. And you can see here that it's pretty good. Now, the mana usage is probably a little heavy. Like, I could probably take out one of the insults if it feels, if it feels like it's too much. Uh, but since I'm not meleeing with her, I can mount her up now. And she'll just sing on a mount, and she'll get that sitting bonus from there. So that is something I'm I'm considering. Uh, I haven't fully tested it out yet, but like I would take a not like say the owlbear here. Oh my god, I gotta get here, and then I can just put her sitting. Now you can't kick while sitting, right? So <laughs> you can't uh, you don't get that. But you can see. All right, I gotta return the melody back on, but. It's, it should theoretically work the same, and I don't have to move her around anymore, right? And like almost 10k a tick on some of these crits, and they're critting like every cycle, right? All right, so that's that's the that that's that that's the melody, right? <laughs> took took a long time to explain all that, but uh, the teleportation bar is the same. Everything else is the same now. I don't know if I changed any of these. It looks like I might have. So let's talk about some of the abilities that we got. So we got Boastful Bellow. Uh, we use that in the multi-bind. It just does a huge amount of damage. Let's see here. 9,000 damage and then 40,000 damage. Bladed Song, which causes the uh, the target to gain a damage shield every time it... Like, it, it causes the target to take damage every time it hits something, right? Like a damage shield. Cacophony. Uh, another damaging spell. This is what uh, 1100 and then 1800 a tick. Uh, Song of so Stone, which is our swarm of gargoyles. So it's our swarm pet. Every 12 minutes, uh, this indirectly benefits the mages that I have through the Jolt of the Many. Just more pets out, more damage. Uh, now we have the two, I would call these the bread and butter of the. <laughs> of the bar now fierce eye and quick time they kind of go hand in hand i use them on cooldown because otherwise i would never use them because i'm just lazy but fierce eye increases melee damage by 20 percent critical damage melee critical damage by 20 percent chance you will trigger your weapons magical effect by 300 percent and the chance your damage and healing spells will apply critically by 10 percent so Everybody in the group's getting 20% more melee damage, 20% more crit melee damage, 300% chance to increase your crit or your proc on your weapon, right? And a 10% to critical heal and uh, do damage. It's insane. And this just goes up and up and up, right? It's insane. And then we have quick time, which uh, at this level, it increases uh, attack power by 6 76 accuracy by 46 and reduces base weapon delay by 6.8 percent uh and you can oh that's the current one but it's, i guess it's the same later on i believe it increases spell casting speed because i i notice when it's on with my high-end necromancer it seems faster but i i, like, I don't even read these half the time now it's like six percent delay off well like let me go here right on the Beast Lord, right? She has a 20 delay and a 19 delay weapon. 6% off that, that takes it down to like almost, uh, what is that, like another tick or two down? So like 18, 16, maybe 17 delay, whatever the math is on that. Insane, right? So, bread and butter, I can do them all the time. <laughs> I don't even, I don't even care if it's, you know, it's just burst of damage right then. Now, if I'm fighting a named, it doesn't even matter. Like, I've, I'm killing level 88 names the same as I'm killing trash mobs at this current level. Uh, so it's it's very it's very interesting. I think as this group gets toward closer and closer to 125, it'll be there'll be some difficulty spikes that we will encounter, but uh, we haven't hit them yet. And I believe that was everything. I went through this like three times to see if there's any other things I'm missing. Uh, but I don't think I am. Uh, we also have cellos on uh, num or num number one now. So I believe I talked about this in like I think like seventy five. But just to make sure, 
Silos is a five minute duration uh, speed buff, and I have that on one now. All right, so that's the multi bind. I also have tracking in here just so I can always see what's up in the zone. Uh, but that's that. Uh, nothing over here. We do. We're starting to have a a, a burn, if you will, like a, a nice lineup of spells we can use to burn. But we're. N I'm not officially committing to uh, building out these buttons to make them uh, work right. <laughs> I'm not committing to that yet because I I just I would never hit them at this point, right? I'm just the way it is. Uh, let's see here, dirge of the sleepwalker. None of these have changed except right here, rallying call. So this is, think of it like focused Paragon. It allows you to select the target and give them uh, mana regeneration or endurance regeneration. It's pretty nice, but the uh, target has to be lower than 30% endurance or 30% mana to actually have that work on them. So it's, it is what it is. Uh, then we have Rallying Solo, which does the same thing, but for us, as long as we are below 30% mana or endurance. Now, this kind of plays into like how I'm burning all my mana. I can then Rallying Solo myself, and while I'm out pulling, for the next 30 seconds, you know, however long it takes for me to get a mob back to camp, this character will regenerate some stuff back. So it, it's, it's, a, it's a thing. We'll see how it works long term, but that's all those. Uh, Gear-wise, as I mentioned, I do have a primary weapon, and I'm using this Rattle the Easily Amused from House of Thule as the offhand. Now, long term, this isn't probably going to be a thing, because as soon as I get past, like, you know, 85, I'll probably have to put another weapon on just so that I can keep up with the HP, endurance, and mana stuff. But this is the highest uh, percussion reconnaissance I could find, and then all of the chants are focused by uh, percussion instruments, right? So having that, like the gloves are only 25, so if I take it off, I lose about 200 to 300 damage per tick on the non-crits, right? So is it worth it? I don't know. I'm trying to be, <laughs> I'm trying to use the character less in the sense that it's using it more by me being able just to focus on playing the, the Shadow Knight and just passively sing, right? We'll see how that ends up. Now, I currently have House of Thule, I think this is tier two gear. Uh, ideally, you would want to have tier one. I just don't feel that TBM gear is worth the effort to change out these augs. I do it on the Shadow Knight, right? Like it's one, two augs, every level for every single piece of gear. And it's just too much for me. I mean, there's like automation software you can use that'll that'll do it. I don't use any of that stuff. Like it's just a, a very tedious process to switch all that out. So House of Thule is probably where it's at. Uh, gear wise, uh, underfoot gear would also work. It's, I think, believe the last tier is about the same as tier one of that. Now, moving into House of Thule, because I do plan on doing all of the quests in House of Thule, we are going to be leveling up this gear to tier four. And by the time we get to Vale Valeris, uh, we will have, we should have tier four House of Thule gear on everybody. If not, we can go to the Call of the Forsaken, West Karana, and buy the the final tier four armor, which is level ninety required. So that is kind of like the process, and I'm gonna try to stay with the expansion gear, except for the Shadow Knight, because I'm already like really invested into the TBM stuff. Uh, but for all these classes that I'm playing, all the gear is going to try and be whatever the expansion we're currently in. And I, I do plan on finishing all the expansions at this from this point on, starting with House of Thule and going through all of them. Uh, so it's, it's a little bit of a change up in how I do the Hobbs and Friends series, but I think at the same time, we'll see a little bit more in action of some of, some of this stuff versus me just killing everything in a zone. Um... But gear-wise, that's pretty much it. You want to find the best instrument modifiers you can. So, like, these Tier 2 are 24. Uh, this one's 25, so I think this is actually not Tier 1. I think this is Tier 3. <laughs> like, I don't even remember the ranks here. 
Uh, I know it's not t tier... F I know this isn't the last tier, is it? Let me see here. What's this one called? Yeah, this one's 85, 90, 82. Let me see what tier one was called. The mage has tier one. Obtruse. Okay, so, yeah. Uh, tier three or two, four. <laughs> I think this is tier two, though. And uh, that one is tier three, because I don't think I got any tier four aug augments in my my last playthrough uh, of Holder just Crusade and Tawani because I would have I would remember that I think because it was rare like I find that I get a lot of like so here's the tokens right these are the tier one tokens I've gotten a lot of these a lot of them uh, just killing all the names right but as you level up through this expansion I find they get rarer and rarer like uh, it took me a while to get uh some tier four ones and then i realized you could just buy the tier four armor at level 90 for marks of valor in <laughs> in uh west karana so the marks of valor right there so it is uh it is what it is but that's where i'm gonna go with gear now if i can find another uh rattle of the easily amused kind of you know that kind of concept with the extremely high percussion reconnaissance later on i haven't even looked on raidloot.com to see but if I can find something like this all the way up to, you know, 125, I will probably keep doing this to mostly just to have the high you know, percussion response for the extra damage on the chance. So I can just really f stay focused by staying next to, you know, my casters here and keep them buffed, right? And play the, play the bard more as a support class and uh, a mini... <laughs> necromancer i guess is what it is because it's dots so we'll see how that goes long term but uh that's you know the kind of the gist of it there uh but that is that is everything that is the bard that is uh is just about all that i can think of for the set 85 uh, i think that it'll, there'll be some changes because i believe we did get a second insult there's like one of the insult knocks it back the other insult doesn't so i, I don't know when they add that next insult uh, but when they do, we'll be using the one that doesn't knock back. And as long as it's still the focus later on, so we can get the uh, Troubadours synergy. But there's some changes that we will make eventually. But right now, the Bard is a phenomenal, phenomenal class. Now, don't skimp on the Bard gear. Now, if you, if you remember in the previous videos, I didn't upgrade her from uh, the TBM level 75, right? And... I noticed she was taking a lot of damage because if I the way I pull is I just tag it with a uh, charge of power or whatever it is and then I run back and if I run over the bard the bard is going to get aggro from the songs that she's singing and pull and it'll hit her now if you don't have gear on the bard the bard might die if you're not quick on healing so if you have a mercenary healer it's probably not a big deal uh, but since I have a shaman healer and, you know, it's a little bit of an investment to start healing, uh, it is a, a little bit of a tricky situation you can get yourself into. But uh, definitely worth keeping the bard fully geared at all times. Same with any other melee class that has a chance to get hit. Now, like on the mages, I find, I find like I don't have to gear them out as much. Uh, but I'm going to start having to here pretty soon so they have all their focus effects and all that. So it's... It really, like early on, you don't have to gear them as much, but later on, it's make sure you have at least the best you can get for them because they will take a lot of damage. But yeah, that's that's it. That's the that's the end. Uh, so if you have any questions or comments, am I, do, am I playing the bar wrong uh, as a box, right? Like this is how I played as a box. This is probably how I would play it if I was playing, you know, just the bard character, right? I would, you know, wouldn't change up too much from what I'm doing now except uh probably have more uh fun stuff like charm and stuff going that i uh, we did do early on but it is what it is uh but yeah that's it that is how i play my level 85 bard if you have questions comment leave them down below thank you very much for watching please have a fantastic day mm -hmm.